like what, when, and why. And before we start, has anyone uh, worked with this architecture before or was interested in it? Okay, if no, I think uh, you should be in, at least interested uh, after we end of this presentation. Uh, so on agenda for today, we have uh, uh, what uh, this architecture is, so which component it consists of. Uh, then there are five key components like state, actions, environment, reducer, and store. We'll discuss uh, when to implement this architecture and why do we need this architecture. We'll also have this live coding example slash challenge and uh, we'll leave a few minutes for Q&A session. And we'll start with what? And this architecture uh, uh, was introduced after uh, CFTI and Combine were introduced by Apple. So uh, with CFTI and Combine popping up in the more and more applications, managing state is becoming more important. The composable architecture is a framework providing many useful tools. It helps to structure your app with understandable and predictable state changes. Uh, so this is architecture is basically uh, uh, based on the state uh, pattern. Uh, TSA focuses on state management, uh, composition and testing is developed by Brandon Williams and Steven Silas. From point three, uh, they have numerous videos providing information about functional programming development. And I'll also uh, say that uh, they developed just a quote pod that can be useful. Uh, when you are going to match this architecture, but for uh, our session, I've uh, created everything from scratch. And let's start with uh, key components. First one we have is the state. Uh, so often a collection of properties represents the state of an app or features spread over many classes and DSA places, places all relevant properties together in a single type. And now I'm going to switch to export uh, so we can see uh, what we are talking about. So here we have this uh, very simple application. We have only three screens in it. Uh, we have authentication screen and uh, never mind the AI just for testing purposes. So we can sign in, uh, we can confirm our email. And then after we sign in, we have this home screen where we see our username, our email, and we can log out. Uh, so it's very basic application. And for this application, I use the composable hit architecture as a base architecture. And now let's take a look at uh, OS logic. So here we have this OS state, uh, which can be uh, three, uh, three, there could be three types of this authentication state. Uh, first one, it could be idle. So when we are uh, just launched our application, we see the screen and we are not doing anything. This is called our idle state. Uh, next step, we have authenticating, or we can uh, name it loading. Uh, this step will become active when we actually enter our uh, credentials and click on sign in button. But as this, this is just for this app is just for testing, we are not performing any available call, so uh, we actually uh, don't have this uh, spinner indicator. Uh, so, but we know that this can be implemented with this architecture. And the last step, uh, step we have here is email confirmation. Uh, so when we click on sign in, it's an, our sign in was successful. Uh, we see this confirm email screen, and uh, the state is responsible for displaying the screen. Okay, uh, any questions so far on uh, state? And feel free to ask any questions you have, and, and do not wait uh, till the end of my presentation. Uh, okay, next component we have is actions. Uh, this is an enumeration including cases for all events that can occur in your app. Uh, when user taps a button, when user, uh, when the timer fires or an API requires the returns. And let's go back to export. Uh, so here on our screen, uh, we can have two types of action. Uh, we can have on login and we are passing uh, two strings which are responsible for a uh, username and password. And there could be separate action is uh, called on confirm email. This is when user was authenticated and we need to present a different screen. And I forgot to mention that uh, this is just the basic implementation of state. Of course, we can implement it in a different way. It could be struct. 
something like this, but uh, we'll have to manage uh, all those properties uh, in a different way. So we can ignore this idle state, but for authentication or loading state, we'll need to add something like uh, is loading Boolean properties that would indicate the AI that uh, we need to present uh, the spinner. And this uh, combination of structures and numbers is very useful when we have a lot of different data displayed on the screen and similar announcements can handle that amount of data because we do not want to cover cases like this when we have like uh, a lot of types uh, stored in num cases. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, next uh, component is environment. Uh, this is a type driven of dependencies of your app or feature. Uh, for example, this can be an API client with asynchronous methods. Uh, so let's take a look at our environment. Uh, so uh, here we use struct as our type. We have the source factory, uh, which is uh, our protocol for our child source factory. This is factory pattern. Uh, we use this uh, source factory to create all sub-child uh, uh, stores. For example, when we are on authentication screen and we uh, want to present this confirmed ML screen, this will be our uh, child store. So we are creating this uh, through uh, stores factory. And also we have this uh, authentication provider. This is where we are actually authenticating user. We can uh, open it. Uh, we have this dumb implementation of this protocol. Uh, so here we have, uh, we are taking as inputs username and password and we are returning user or error if such occurs. And then uh, it's really easy to manage all dependencies across application. We need to uh, uh, define them in one place and then we can uh, pass them around to each store where it needed uh, through stores factory. So let's take a look at uh, beginning of our application at our root view. And here we are uh, initializing all of our providers, all of our environmental uh, things. And we are passing things to stores factory and stores factory itself. It distributes uh, all those external dependencies to each store where needed. And therefore we're not using any simultons or static methods, et cetera. Uh, everything is very clear and understandable. Okay, and uh, now let's go back to uh, our presentation. Next component we have is reducer. Uh, this is a function that uses a given action to transform uh, the current state to the next state. So this is probably the most complicated place uh, in composable architecture. Uh, it's where we need to predict all possible states and each action uh, in what state it can occur. So for example, if we are talking about this authentication reducer, uh, we have this method called reduce. We are taking a state, which would be our current state. We are taking action, uh, what action happened in that state. And we are also passing environment. And in, in that environment, we are passing all our dependencies. And as a result of uh, this reducer, it should be either a uh, result of work of the whole screen or just uh, next state. So for example, uh, result of work of this, uh, let me go back to authentication screen, a uh, result of work of this screen uh, would be uh, locked in user. So we'll have a user instance and we are defining this uh, type ls, uh, which is called uh, OS result to be user. It could be either void if you are not uh, passing any information to the next screens, or it could be never if the work of this uh, screen is not done ever. Okay, and here, we are starting with, so here we have all our three states and you might notice that we are returning nil while authenticating. So we are not even uh, considering uh, doing anything about actions that can happen uh, while authenticating. So for example, uh, when we uh, press on the sign in button, it might take a few seconds for user to sign in and uh, to uh, eliminate possibility of any other user interactions, uh, it can be really, really easy done with just a line of code. And we know that user won't be able to tap on the sign in button. 
at two times, etc. It will only happen just once. Uh, and uh, next two states we have is idle. So uh, we know that while we are in idle state, only one action could happen. User can only log in, and we are taking this username and password. And we are uh, using our environment to authenticate user. So here we are just uh, saying after user was authenticated to return this new state, next state, email confirmation, and we are passing user in there. If we ever got an error, we can handle in this catch method. But for testing purposes, I didn't do that, but uh, we could just have a different state, like uh, error, where we would pass error, and we can return the state in here and display this error in the UI. Uh, next one we have is this prepend method. Uh, this is used uh, for uh, our loading indicator. So for example, if this method, uh, uh, this state will be active uh, after this uh, method begins his work, uh, but until it finishes, so uh, either until map or catch, this state will be authenticating. And we are just writing to any publisher to uh, return value. Okay, and it's very similar with email confirmation, but here we have uh, instead of returning the next state, uh, we are saying that uh, authentication flow is done, and we want we want to return the user. We actually don't know what will happen next. Uh, it's all in our root logic. Uh, so. As for now, this screen only knows, only knows that he needs to authenticate user and return a user to uh, root view and root view will handle the rest. Okay, and I think for our site, uh, our OS store, and now let's take a look at our uh, root store. So it will be more understandable what is actually happening. Uh, okay, so now uh, we are in this, uh, Root, st root store, which is basically the highest uh, uh, level of our application. Uh, so here we have uh, the same the same uh, enums, the same structs as we had with our authentication logic, but they have a different state. Uh, so here we have uh, three states, which are called idle. So this is when our application is launching or could be our launch screen. Uh, next, we have authentication. This is when we are uh, presenting our authentication flow. And uh, the last one we have home. This is was after our user was uh, authenticated. We are uh, showing some user information and we provide an option to log out. And there could be three actions. Uh, first action is authenticate. This is, this is what happens by default when app launches. Uh, next, we have a uh, user locked in, and the last we have a user locked out. And we have two child stores factory as uh, we have our host store and we have our spam store. And there are no limitations of on how many uh, child stores uh, one stores factory could have. So we could go on and go on, and there could be as many layers as you want. And the result of our uh, root logic is never because. Uh, this uh, logic is always exists, and we always uh, expect that the user can log out or log in, and we will need to switch CI. And we, here we have our reducer. So uh, in idle state here, so when we are in the launch screen, we are expecting ability to only authenticate user. So we are returning the next state, which authenticate, uh, and this can be really useful when we have. Uh, we not need to authenticate user each time he uh, logs in into application. Uh, so, for example, we can store a user state, and we can here we can have a different action for the retrieve user, and we'll show this some idle a screen or loading indicator, and here we'll handle retrieving user, and if it was successful, then we will display a home state right away, and if not, we'll display uh, or state. Uh, and next we have uh, our host state, and we know for a while we are authenticating, we can expect only one action to be locked in, and uh, no, and that would be all. No other actions are allowed, so a user won't be able to do anything that except of lock, uh, logging in into application. And uh, the result of that action would be uh, 
and displaying home state with our user in it, and the same goes for layout. And here we're using, uh, uh, we are have two additional methods to create stores and based on uh, result of each store. So here, uh, result of our uh, host store is uh, user. So we are calling this locked in action and our result of home store would be void. So we are just uh, calling locking out action. And now let's take a look at our root view. Uh, so here, this is a very simple view. Uh, we have this root store, which is linking us to this root logic. We have observed object the state, uh, which is root state. And it's really easy to do with uh, updating the UI. We don't need any callbacks, any delegates or did sets. Uh, it all happens uh, automatically with Swiftui in combined combination. And here we add the here initiating uh, our root view, we are calling uh, method authenticate. So it will return uh, with our parent implementation, it will return uh, our state. Uh, and here we have our state view. Uh, so uh, we are displaying this uh, host view. And if uh, the state is host, then we are displaying host view. And if the state is home, we are displaying this home view. Okay. Uh, Let's go back to presentation to see what else we have there. Okay, uh, we will already discuss store, but uh, this is a place for your uh, UI to observe the, to the changes and various and actions. Based on these actions, it runs reducers. Uh, now we can discuss when to implement this architecture, and I would recommend definitely to implement this architecture at the beginning of the project. Uh, because it would be very ineffective and time consuming to uh, refactor all the project after it was going on after some time. And uh, this architecture is different from MVVM and some other architectures. So it would not be as easily to refactor this project as it would be with other architectures. And here is five in this architecture. Uh, the data uh, flows through the different components is clearly defined and undirectional. So here we've seen like uh, how we can pass uh, different states between uh, the same screen, how we can uh, pass the data between different screens. Uh, next full thing we have is uh, environment contains all dependencies. Uh, we've already seen that. And the next one we have by composing separate features together. Each feature can be planned, built and tested on its own. And we can see as that we have uh, for each screen, we have a different model, and as this is, uh, this model is very independent, so we can uh, work on it independently of other models, and it will be easier to work even if a lot of developers work on the same project and uh, uh, they won't have uh, more context. Okay, and using TSA can change the way you work on apps, allowing you to focus on one part of, uh, of the app at a time and even runs in, uh, in isolation. And the last thing is only reducers transforming the state by processing actions, testing a feature boils down to running the reducer of the actions and comparing the resulting state with the expectation. Uh, so here, if we uh, I'm going to take a look at the reducer. We can see that uh, we have the state, which is current state, we have action. And uh, on in the result of this methods, we have a new, new state or next state, or we can have a result. So uh, uh, writing the unit test for this architecture is very simple. We can just pass uh, uh, our initial state and we can uh, compare its state of the, uh, output of this matrix with the state we are expecting, or if you we are expecting the result. Okay, and now let's do a live coding example. Uh, so uh, I have a different branch here, uh, but I uh, deleted this email information screen and we can write it from scratch. Okay, let me build this application. Okay, so we have sign-in screen and we have this home screen. And uh, 
let's start with uh, right now one email information provider. We have this provider provider folder in here. We can create a new file and let's name it email information provider. Okay, let's define a protocol, uh, email confirmation provider uh, type. Uh, I like to uh, add in type at the end of the protocol so it will be easier for developers uh, that can work in this project in future to uh, differentiate protocols from classes and from structs, et cetera. And here we can have our method confirm and it will take into account new fields that was entered, which is stream field email and our existing user. Okay, and let's uh, import combine as we will use this feature type, which is combine type. So this method can return either a user or error. And for those of you who haven't worked with future type, uh, it's very similar to result type. It returns either success or failure depending on what happened. And now let's create a class that will uh, confirm this protocol. But let's call it a uh, dummy email confirmation provider because it actually does nothing. It just updates user email. Uh, now let's uh, return this future promise of type of user or error. And this promise in it. And by default, we will return this success. Uh, user ID and name will be, still, will be the same, but we'll use an embedded email. Okay, okay. okay let's see if we can build up application until everything is successful. Now let's uh, go ahead and create a new model. Uh, we'll call it email confirmation. And we'll place it inside of our OS folder. So we'll know that this uh, model is one uh, layer lower than our own. And let's start with writing our email confirmation project. Okay. Uh, I usually just copy in. Uh, Logic from a different file and renaming on classes, structs, and names, etc. Not to write everything from scratch, but I can use something like this. Okay, now let's go ahead and confirm that we have all correct states, actions, etc. Uh, so we have uh, two possible states idle and loading. Loading will happen uh, when the user taps on confirm button. Next, we can, we can have only one action instead of two. We can have one confirm action, uh, which uh, confirm button will trigger and will pass only one uh, string, which would be our email. Uh, our result will be the same user, but this will be updated user. Uh, we won't have any uh, child stores, so we can remove this protocol. Uh, we don't need this. And we will have, instead of authentication provider, we'll have this email confirmation provider. And here I'm using protocol instead of class, uh, just making it up. Okay, and in our reducer, uh, we can expect to be two states. Yeah, when we're loading, we won't return anything. So any user interaction with uh, application during loading uh, will not trigger any actions. And in our idle state, uh, we will have this unconfirmed uh, action. You will have email in it. 
and we also need a user. So let's add a user in here. And other, another way uh, for this state to be could be something like this. I'm just copying. Um, but I'm finding uh, working with states is much easier with, with um, than with trucks. But yeah, it's uh, it's okay to work with both. Okay, so here we have our different providers. So let's uh, apply some of my existing method to authenticate with uh, email information provider and method confirm. Here we can use our email and let's unwrap this property here. User and as a result of the screen, we can, uh, as a result of the email information screen, we'll have an updated user. So let's just uh, do it here. And uh, so uh, if we have got an error, we will handle it in this state. So if we just, is the same as our idle state. And while we're uh, confirming users email, we can have load instead. Okay, that's it for our email confirmation logic. And we don't have any options, we can remove this default uh, case. Let's try to load the application. Okay, everything looks fine. Uh, now we can move on to writing our uh, email information view. And once again, I'm going to our authentication view and just open it. Okay, uh, now we can do the same with find and replace. Now we can make like, uh, we can go line by line to check if we have everything. Uh, uh, as we've expected to be. So instead of username and password, we will have one only one state property uh, called email. Uh, so here we have our observable state, everything is okay. Uh, here we have loading. And uh, let's make a start from here. We do not need this text field, we need only one text field, it should be our email text field. and we'll map it to state property email. Okay, and now let's change it in here. We'll have email text field. We can change this text instead of welcome to be confirmed email. And instead, we do not, we do not have this action on login as we are a different uh, model. We have action on confirm and use our email. And instead of sending, we can have our confirm button. Okay, so that's it for our UI. Uh, as you can see, it was really easy to add as uh, most of the logic is very simple between different models. We can just copy them and so just change only a few parts of it and everything is, can work uh, the way we expect it to be. Uh, now let's go to our host logic and let's actually add this new state called case uh, confirm email. And let's add the user in here because we'll need to pass this user to our uh, email confirmation view. Okay, and we already have this action on confirmed email, which will be triggered after the user presses confirm button on the email screen. And uh, let's create new methods called uh, I make uh, email information store, which will take user instance uh, and uh, we will have a result. Uh, let me just go to source factor so I can maybe just copy it from there.
Okay, and this result will be a result of uh, email confirmation store. And of type of email confirmation result. Okay, now we edit it. And if we try to build this, uh, we'll have two errors. Uh, error in reduced will fix uh, later, but uh, let's focus on this. So here we have our stores factory uh, where we need to uh, confirm this as child stores factory. We need to create this new method, email information store. And let's start with adding environment. Okay, and for this environment, we need this email confirmation provider, but currently we don't have it. Uh, so we need to add it uh, through our uh, init block. Okay, and let's save this property. Okay, and now we can access this property. Uh, next, we can define our authentication, our email confirmation store. So let's create store. Or we can just uh, use return, but I prefer a certain in a different property in case we need to debug something or we can add something in the future. Okay, uh, so for state, our state, uh, our uh, state will be idle and we will use user in here. Our reducer would be uh, email confirmation reducer. What's how to produce? Uh, our environment would be the one we just defined, and one property is missing because it's optional, is on result. And we can just use this one result to define in our method. Okay, uh, now if you try to build application of a machine state, oh, we missed uh, this part. Over here, as this is observable property, we need to use in it and then we can parse the user. Uh, so here we uh, can expect this error to be in reducer, but it's uh, probably on show we could have a different error. It's in our starting place for logic is in uh, here. So here we did not define uh, our uh, email information provider and we need it to do it right now and we need to pass it uh, to source factory. Okay, and now we can go to this reducer and we can fix our logic. So here we can expect to be one more state, which would be called confirm email. We have a user in here. Now let's uh, switch actions. And uh, in this configure email screen, we can expect only one action to happen on configure email. And here we will have updated user. And we actually don't need this user, I think. And if we've experienced uh, this action as a email was confirmed, then we can uh, return the result and we can do it like this. Result and uh, as we defined in here, result of this store would be user. So we need to pass the user in here and we need to erase this to any publisher. Okay. Uh, we already done this. Now, uh, as we've added new state, we need to add new state in here and uh, we can do it 
right here. Let me find the line. Okay. Uh, we have one more net state. One confirm email. Confirm email. We have a user in here. Okay. And here we need to return a uh, mail confirmation view. Uh, but before we can do that, we need to add uh, uh, for, for this view, we need to create a store in our OS logic. So we can do it in here. Uh, as input will take only a user and on the output of this method would be email confirmation store and we can create this store via our environment we can post respectfully we can create a call method making mail information store we can pass this user and on the result so here we need to handle the result we have this user and we need to add with self and here we can call our dispatch to follow the user of this action on confirmed email and with updated user. And one more thing we need to do is because currently we are already uh, returning result. Okay. Yeah, I forgot to do this. Okay, uh, it should work here, but we'll also need to fix it in factory. Uh, okay, as you currently see, we will already return the result uh, user and we are, uh, we are not uh, returning this new state we introduced confirm email and we need it to fix it in here so we can do it like this. To state, our new state will be confirm email and we can pass user like this. Okay. And here we already return a result. Okay. Now we need to go back to our uh, OS view and we can use our store to make email confirmation store and this user will be fine here. Uh, I think now we can give it a try and proceed. Okay, have to return the store. Okay, now let's see if we've added everything correctly. Let's enter some dummy credentials. Here we see our confirm email screen. Uh, notice that we don't have currently this email to repopulate it with our existing email. And once we click on confirm screen, we see our home screen. And so one last thing we need to do is to add, uh, to repopulate this uh, email field was already existing email in case users emails didn't change so uh, first uh, we can go to our logic we can create this property called email and if our state would be either user be equal uh, so uh, otherwise we'll return just an empty string and if in case we are in idle state we'll return uh, user email and now uh, all we need to do is to go to our view here and we can uh, read we can add this we can uh reuse this new field we just created we can do it in here so we have this email field which is binded to our text field so what we can do is help email instead of just an empty string we can even remove this default value instead of an empty string it could be uh, something like this email and now let's give it a try OK, 
Okay, uh, let's go to some main screen. Okay, now we see this existing email and we can update it. We can click on confirm and we see the updated email. Okay, and now I think we can go back to presentation and always left is Q&A session. So any questions? Okay, if no questions, that's also great. It means that you understood everything I just showed, uh, but I wanted also to show this uh, Cocoa pod. Uh, so this Cocoa pod was uh, created by this point three company, uh, which introduces uh, new architecture. And it has already a lot of uh, things built in. So we don't need to add some basic things. We can just reuse the ones that they already implemented. Okay, uh, yep, I think I'm done. Thank, thank you all for coming here and for listening to me for a lot of time. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me in Teams or via email.